Human Relations and School Discipline is designed for in-service professional development for teachers and school administrators and for anyone else interested in public education. Today's program, The OK Classroom, features Dr. Thomas Harris. I uh, first uh, began with uh, Eric Byrne in 1958, just as he was uh, beginning to put together some of the ideas that you now know as transactional analysis. At that time, I'd been a psychiatrist or a psychoanalyst for about 12 to 15 years. And the impact of this first presentation of his on uh, myself personally and what it enabled me to begin to do with people, uh, I just dropped everything that I'd been trained in and turned totally to uh, transactional analysis and began to develop my own ideas, my own versions. I worked constantly to simplify, to simplify the principal concepts of transactional analysis. That was Dr. Thomas Harris, and I'm Dave Bell. Transactional analysis, familiar words to the millions of people who have read either I'm okay, you're okay, or the writings of Dr. Eric Byrne. Dr. Harris is the author of I'm okay, you're okay. In this program, he'll be talking with teachers and describing what it takes to achieve an okay classroom. An okay classroom is a classroom in which a psychological technique called transactional analysis helps the teachers and the children feel good about themselves. Good enough so that old problems disappear and everybody can concentrate on the business at hand, which is teaching and learning. Transactional analysis, or TA as we abbreviated, is a group of techniques to help a person improve his relationship with others and even his attitude toward himself. The basic scientific unit of transactional analysis is the transaction, which simply stated is, I do something to you and you do something in return. Transaction is one of eight easy to understand terms which are essential to a clear understanding of transactional analysis. A transaction is a unit of social intercourse. Two people in any number of interactions which can be described and analyzed. And here are some examples. When you find yours, you'll have a bingo. Where do you is it? Snake. Somewhere in this palette. How does it go? See, well, you put a, uh, get some string, put it through a straw, you tape it all together and make it go straight. All teachers spend time in transactions with students or observing transactions between students. The value of being able to analyze these transactions is that it can help to open or keep open those all-important lines of communication to promote positive transactions and change or stop negative transactions. The next three terms essential to an understanding of TA are parent, adult, and child. Continual observation has convinced me that the personality of every person in the world is made up of these three distinct parts, or ego states. Ego states are logical systems of thought and feeling, clearly shown by corresponding patterns of behavior. We like to say that the parent and the child is our term for data recorded and stored in the brain uh, in the earliest years, let's say the first five years. And uh, the parent is um, most often thought of as the taught concept of life. Uh, it's externally derived. Everything in the parent came from out there, whether it was from a television set or a teacher or mom and dad. It all goes into this body of knowledge that we call the taught concept of life that uh, is characteristically authoritative, uh, judgmental, uh, can, can be very critical, but also nurturing, kindly, uh, compassionate. All of the qualities that the little person sees in the world around him, uh, this is the parent. The child is made up of the felt concept of life, what the little person feels in reaction to what's going on around him. And since uh, most of those early years are uh, pre-vocabulary, we'd say that uh, most of what's in the child are feelings. The adult uh, appears uh, along about eight or nine months 
out of uh, the child's developing ability to uh, begin to think for himself. He can move, he can begin to uh, make comparisons and begin to uh, acquire meanings uh, that he can test and uh, file away for future use. And that's the beginning of the capacity for logic and reasoning. So this is our diagram of the personality. Every person's parent, spelled with a capital P, is a huge collection of recordings in the brain. Recordings of external events perceived by each person in about the first five years of his life. For example, we all have some of the following taught concepts indelibly recorded in our brains. No. I tell you, you can't trust anybody these days. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I'll tell you, you stick it to them before they can stick it to you. Recorded in every person's parent are all the admonitions and rules and laws that the little person hears from his mother and father and perceives from their actions. The child ego state is different. Every person's child is a recording of internal events, of emotions, all the responses to what he sees and hears and feels and understands. Since a child very early perceives his helplessness, his fears vastly outweigh his joys. A child cannot avoid the conclusion that I am not okay. A sour look from dad is only one of thousands of perceptions in the child which add to his recordings of negative data. The parent and the child are permanent recordings. They can be turned down like uh, the radio, but they, uh, they, they can't be erased. The little girl in you, uh, the little boy in you is the little boy and little girl that will go with you to the grave but you can undergo tremendous, or conceivably, total change. Your lifestyle, whatever it is you want. Just remember that the options are infinite right here. Indeed, the third part of your personality is not a recorder, but is, in fact, much more like a data processing computer, which grinds out decisions after computing the information from the parent the child, and the data available to the adult from the real world. The adult is the seat of decision-making. The adult's role is decision-making, uh, probability estimating, uh, priority uh, establishing, and all reality-based. All reality-based. The parent is a collection of taught data, uh, mainly uh, imposed in those first five years. The child is a collection of feelings. One more point about the adult. It should be as uncontaminated as possible. That is, uninfluenced by urgings from the parent and child. Parent data, which is unexamined, but accepted as true, is contamination in the form of prejudice. Child data contamination, grounded in fear, is a delusion or hallucination. The ideal condition is to have your adult completely uncontaminated by parent or child, completely independent, able to accept or reject their suggestions. What are you doing right now? We're again, right, what page did you When the parent, adult, or child of one person engages the PAC of another, a transaction is taking place and can be diagrammed by using the PAC circles, as you will see. But first, let's complete TA's list of basic terminology. Why do people participate in transactions? They participate in order to get strokes. Everyone needs strokes. Some strokes are verbal. Uh -huh. Good for you. Now, when I see your hand, I'll come over and I'll look at what you've read, and I'll ask you to read a little bit to me. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's right. I can. Are you ready to start? Yeah. Okay, let's see you do a good job. Some strokes are tactile. 
Strokes are actually a form of recognition. They can be active or passive, positive or negative. And any kind of a stroke is better than no stroke at all. Some kids don't get many strokes. They're ignored. Negative, so-called negative strokes, uh, they're better than nothing. And sometimes that's all uh, some kids get. And so they're pretty hostile and uh, they tend to, uh, that's the only way they know, beat on people. Okay, boys, cut it out. In order to gain strokes, some people manipulate a certain series of transactions. These transactions progress to a predictable outcome with a psychological payoff. This activity, which always follows a prescribed pattern, is called a game. I believe the genesis of all games is the three-year-old childhood game, mine is better than yours, which means, of course, I am better than you. People play games because they haven't overcome their childhood feelings of, I'm not okay. They play games in the vain hope of making themselves feel better. At best, the game player gets only a temporary relief because he hadn't solved his problem and has, in fact, reinforced his I'm not okay feeling. But to this not okay person, it makes the outside world seem to care for him, however little. And that outside world or other person is consequently okay. Thus, the young person takes what I call the first life position. And this first life position is, I'm not okay, you're okay. Now, this position, which occurs very early, based on available data, operating at the deepest level of our being, has an extremely uh, uh, powerful deterministic influence for the rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives, Every time we run into a hitch or a disappointment or a failure, uh, the old feelings that were originally recorded in those first five years start to roll on the tape. And we will respond today as if we were back there then. I'm not okay. You're okay. Feeling in the child are a decision of the adult. There are two other decisions, I'm not okay, you're not okay, which are the result of continuing put down or what we call uh, discounting. You don't count. And the third one, I'm okay, you're not, is a result of uh, surviving from brutality and violence. Those people are sometimes referred to and traditionally as psychopaths and uh, uh, sociopaths and so on they are very difficult to understand. My theory is that they are, that position is a product of survival. The fourth position, I'm okay, you're okay, can only be achieved through the adult. The fourth position is the one to strive for. This life position is conscious. The other three are unconscious. I'm okay, you're okay is the position of trust, respect, intercommunication, and self-acceptance. So, that's the desired outcome. With that, you've heard the principal terms used in TA. Parent, adult, child, which are the ego states and collectively make up every personality. Transaction, an encounter to obtain strokes, which are recognition, and game, a series of transactions to achieve a well-defined psychological payoff, and last, the life positions, I'm not okay, you're okay, I'm not okay, you're not okay, I'm okay, you're not okay, and I'm okay, you're okay. With that as a background, we're ready to work towards an okay classroom with okay kids and an okay teacher. A teacher who knows how to analyze transactions in order to keep those lines of communication open. And communication is information transfer between an ego state of one person and an ego state of another person. There are two kinds of transactions. Complementary transactions, where the lines are parallel, and uncomplementary ones, where the lines are crossed. A TA rule of communication states 
that when the transaction lines are parallel, communication continues until the transaction is complete. Conversely, when transactions cross, meaningful communication stalls. How do you know whether you're hearing a parent, an adult, or a child? There are many clues. Here are some verbal parent clues. This train is always late. It's never on time. It's the dumbest railroad in the world. Always and never are usually parent words, revealing within the person a system closed to new data. In addition to baby talk and superlatives, there are many verbal child clues also. I wish we'd get there. I don't know if we'll ever get there. I don't care if we never get there. And there are verbal clues to the adult as well. Why are you in a hurry? What are you doing? Where are you going? When will you arrive? Who are you meeting? How do you know that? The adult questions a lot. But words such as probable, possible, I think, I see. It is my opinion and many others indicate data processing, and data processing happens only in the adult. There are clues other than verbal ones, too. Here's what the parent looks like. There are many other looks which may be singular to one's own parent. The hurting child looks like this. The fun child, the spontaneous child, lives in movement. <laughs> That's the child. Here's the adult. Watch him as he listens. Barry, in my book, I quote Winston Churchill, who says, democracy is the worst form of government one can imagine until one tries to imagine one that is better. Then I go on to say that democracy can only function with an intelligent electorate, and an intelligent electorate is an adult electorate, a government of the parent by the parent and for the parent will perish from the earth. My opinion, Winston Churchill is right, and uh, so are you, I think. I would say that rather than uh, the ideal person being an adult, all the, in the adult all the time, the ideal person be a person who has an adult that's really in touch, out there, up here, what's my parent saying, what, where's my kid, and what is the situation out there? What are my options? The adult is the developer of options. Uh, a good, healthy adult will never get caught with his options down. <laughs> now let's analyze some transactions. First, parent to parent. <sighs> this train is always late. Never fails. Did you ever see it on time? Never. You just don't get service like you used to. You're absolutely right. And does it cost? You can say that again. And does it cost? Parent to parent, without doubt. Let's look at another parallel transaction, this time child to child. Mine's bigger than yours. Mine's better. Mine's biggest. Mine's best. I wish I had another one. I want another one. I'm going to get another one. I don't care. They aren't childlike voices, but they are the child speaking. And now, parallel transactions from the adult. Why are you in a hurry? I have an appointment. Where are you going? To New York. I think New York's a great town. What makes you think so? There's so many things to do. That's true. There are, of course, other types of parallel transactions. All oh, hippies smell bad. It's worse than a garbage dump. I don't know if we're ever going to get there. You always say that. Parallel transactions, remember, continue until completed. When transactions are crossed, however, communication stops. This train is always late. You could walk. I wish we'd get there. 
I think we will. What are you doing? If you had a brain, you'd know. All hippies smell bad. Just like you always do. The transaction in which the most useful information is exchanged is adult to adult. Adult to adult transactions occur without psychological damage. Child to child transactions can be fun and creative and a change of pace, but they work best when the adult is in charge. Or you can use uh, the recipes, okay? It's easier for children to develop their adult if they have an adult as a model. A person who demonstrates how to handle situations consistently in an adult manner. Watch these documentary examples, which incidentally were not filmed specifically as examples of TA, and see if you can analyze the transactions that are taking place. There you go. Now, these are your cookbooks. That is what we're going to use to cook with. These are some of the things that we're going to cook, okay? We're going to start with donut puffs, and this is a recipe for donut puffs, okay? And this you can check where the parent or adult is being used by asking, where did that idea come from? Is it true? Is it applicable? Don't you feel like working? No. Can you tell me why? No. Do you want to talk about it now? No. Could we talk about it later? Can you tell me when you'd like to talk about it? Do you know now? Okay, if I come back a little later, can you signal me or tell me when you want to talk about it? Okay, then I'll see you a little later, okay? It's important for teachers to stay in their adult, as we say. But it's also important to be a total person, not excluding their fun child. Staying in your adult keeps you out of other people's games and thus keeps you from getting into pointless or damaging transactions. A couple of tips which can help you get your adult in charge are counting to 10 before you react and dividing up a complicated situation to handle one part at a time. What did you do, Terry? He came in front of me. What did you do, Terry? Transactional analysts like rewards much better than punishments. Rewards complement the transactional analysis structure. For us, the open classroom is better than the more authoritarian classroom, since authoritarianism reinforces the child's not okay feelings. Once you're using TA, you'll realize that some typical school traditions which seem to be motivating, such as letter grades, student-to-student -student competition, and remarks like, you aren't trying, and try harder, are often ineffective, if not downright damaging. They all reinforce the kid's not okay without helping him achieve his adult. Yes. Can you think of one? Where is it? Uh, somewhere over there. Usually kids don't go down there. All right, uh, how long do you think it would be necessary for you to sit on this kind of a bench and be excluded from activities with the other boys and girls? When you give strokes, be careful not to attach a condition. Uh, don't say in so many words, you can be okay if. That's a parent position, and you want to stay away from that. A kid whose tough first couple of years has him in the second or third life position, I'm not okay, you're not okay, or I'm okay, you're not okay, are a lot harder to get to. They're starved for strokes, but in their view, there are no okay people to give them strokes. All you can be is patient and not judgmental or blaming. Let them know you recognize their not okay child, but hang on to your own okay and always try to communicate an I'm okay, you're okay attitude. All children, all of us, have a brain computer capacity immense enough to solve virtually every problem if we can just get our adult into the transaction. Your goal is to move those kids who are bored and pain 
away from there not okay. Kids have to make their own choices, to take responsibility for their own lives, and to enjoy their lives in the light of freedom and their newfound responsibility. If it really needs to be redone, it will look awfully nice in ten. It's important that I know why you feel so strongly about it. You, the teacher, are the prime mover in achieving an okay classroom. Uh, Darryl, will you put this By using transactional analysis techniques, you're helping your kids strengthen their adults. After your class has been introduced to TA terminology, it's time to make a contract with them. A contract is merely an agreement regarding mutual expectations, such as an understanding that you're here to teach and the kids are here to learn. Once the children have learned the language of transactional analysis, they will use it in analyzing their own transactions, and they'll make their own contracts. A contract should not be one way. It must be two, two. Now, only the adult, the adult can do this. The parent will insist on hooking the child. Child will insist on hooking the parent. Adult to adult can make a, a viable contract. There must be something for the or both participants. And what part of both participants? The child. And this is particularly important for the uh, contracts that are made with little people in the classroom. Uh, it must be adult to adult. The contract must be well defined. In other words, the, the youngster must not have a misconception of what's contracting. Uh, you contract for one issue at first, then go on to a second issue and a third issue. Uh, you uh, operate on the basis of consequences, not punishment. Con see, here the adult, the adult runs all the way through this. You write the contract down. The kids want it, the teacher will sign it. And the kids will come up and sign it. Uh, there's always a provision for renegotiating. The contract can be changed, that's the adult. And the last one, don't contract when emotional. Well, what do you think you could have done to help the game? Once your kids start using transactional analysis, be prepared for a new relationship with them. Get ready to have fun child to child and do your work adult to adult. Get ready for a productive and satisfying educational climate. Our thanks to Dr. Thomas Harris for this review of transactional analysis and what it takes to achieve an okay classroom. If you have any trouble sorting out the barrage of information in this film, your study guide and, of course, Dr. Harris's book will be of help. I think just working on this program has helped me analyze some of my own transactions. And I hope TA becomes as useful for you as I suspect it will be for me. Let's see now. I believe that was my adult talking. If you get in line with that money, what are you going to do with it? Don't help him.